2024 with the hottest day on record and the hottest months on record, this is almost certain to be the hottest year on record. And the masterclass in climate destruction. Statements such as that are amplified by emotional footage from all over the world. But is any of it true? I do not think there's a climate crisis, and I base that on all the evidence and the climate data sets that we build to answer questions just like that. We actually use satellites to monitor the global temperature, the true global temperature of the atmosphere. And we find there is a rise. It's about uh, 1.5 degrees per century, which is certainly something that's manageable and the Earth has seen before. Compared to the 19th century, which was about the coolest century in the past 10,000 years, we're warmer. But we're about the same as we were a thousand years ago and certainly cooler than we were about five to eight thousand years ago. John Christie is a highly regarded climate scientist who developed the measurement of accurate temperature records using satellites. His evidence is critically inconvenient to the climate change industry. I'm not popular in most of the climate community, that's for sure, because uh, much of the climate community depends on climate model results. Tens and hundreds of millions of dollars have gone into that industry of climate modeling, and I show, well, you folks have failed. Uh, but yet they prop up the entire political world that tends to support this. In 2017, Nut came to work and there were seven bullet holes <laughs> in uh, our office suite. And so uh, some people are pretty upset that uh, the evidence that we build and show that can stand the test of time and can stand up to cross-examination is just not going along with their issues and uh, their desires. So let's consider these statistics on the Earth's atmosphere. 78% is nitrogen, 21% oxygen, other gases make up less than 1%, and carbon dioxide accounts for a mere 0.04%, the majority of which is natural. Can man-made CO2 really be a problem? Roy Spencer and I are going on the assumption that all the warming that you see is due to carbon dioxide emissions. And uh, so we find that that's a pretty modest warming but see, that's a big assumption. Mother Nature is able to warm up the planet without extra CO2. And so uh, we are just saying the worst case scenario is this warming of about a degree and a half. And uh, that's certainly not a catastrophe at all. On the contrary, carbon dioxide is vital for the world's survival. The greater the concentration, the better plants grow. In fact, according to NASA figures, the world has become 14% greener in the last 40 years. During the last cool period before industrialization, let's say 200 years ago or so, it was below 300 parts per million. Uh, and during the ice ages, it was even lower. And that's a, a dangerous uh, level because plants struggle and struggle to survive when the CO2 is at a low level. And so the biosphere becomes less uh, diverse and less available to support the animal life. So uh, low CO2 is not good for the planet as a whole. Where is the logic then behind the UK's decision to spend 22 billion pounds on facilities to capture carbon? The greatest controversy of all revolves around readings from ice cores. CO2 levels can be measured in bubbles of air trapped in ice thousands of years ago. By aligning this to temperatures, scientists have argued that carbon dioxide is the cause of global warming. However, closer inspection leads to the opposite conclusion. Once the temperature starts to rise, you will see the carbon dioxide rise about 500 to 1,000 years after. So the CO2 actually lags the uh, uh, temperature changes. But what of the extreme weather events, which are increasing and driven by climate change, according to everyone from the top of the United Nations down? Professor Christie says there is no data to support those claims. And what we find is that virtually every one of these claims is false. 
the extremes are not increasing. Hurricanes are not increasing in intensity or um, frequency. Same with tornadoes or thunderstorms or floods or droughts. It's just going along like it always has with the natural variability. Why aren't we looking at the surface data sets that are constantly adjusted upwards? Why aren't we looking at the 40.3 record at Connersby, which the Met Office is very proud of, uh, on July the 19th in 2022? And when we did a Freedom of Information request at the Daily Skeptic, uh, we found that there were three Typhoon jets landing on a runway next to the measuring device, because Connersby, as they call it, is actually RAF Connersby. It's a military airport. The temperature lasted for 60 seconds. Sticking a thermometer up the backside of a jet aircraft is not probably scientifically the best place that you can sort of determine a temperature measurement, particularly when you then morph it into a global database, which the Met Office has, and then tell dear old Antonio Gutierrez that the globe is boiling. Um, the whole thing is junk. How we came to the point where we think that we're going to prevent bad weather from happening by eliminating fossil fuels it's just about the most nonsensical, illogical thing that I can imagine. And the whole world is caught up in this nonsense. So how did the carbon story take hold? Meet the man who invented climate change, according to The Telegraph. His name? Maurice Strong. An oil tycoon, a Rockefeller associate, and a man with an extraordinary talent for moving between high finance politics and the United Nations. Strong was a member of the highly influential Club of Rome, an institution formed in 1968 at a Rockefeller property on Lake Como in Italy. A group of scientists, academics and industrialists discussed what they saw as an urgent crisis, the impact of human activity on the planet. I don't think we can sustain current growth trends much beyond say, the lives of children who are being born today. To prove the thesis, they commissioned computer modeling at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. This research laid the foundations for an agenda that's persisted for over 50 years. Cut use of autos, use less electric power, have fewer children, limit growth. All of this was fueling this ideology that there's too many people on the planet, there's not enough resources, and that something has to be done. The natural world in which man lives and on which we, he depends is indeed deteriorating, is being uh, destroyed in many instances at a, uh, a rate that is accelerating and that can only continue to accelerate unless we begin to control the activities that are, 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 are having this destructive impact. In 1975, the Club of Rome published a second report, Mankind at the Turning Point. The lead quotation was telling. The world has cancer, and the cancer is man. The report concluded, The solution of these crises can be developed only in a global context with full and explicit recognition of the emerging world system, a new world economic order, and a global resources allocation system. In other words, technocracy. Top-down control of everything, including populations. But if that was the solution, a worldwide problem was required. Climate change provided the answer, as admitted in a later Club of Rome document. This is the quote from page 115. In searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine, and the like would fit the bill. All these dangers are caused by human intervention, and it is only through changed attitudes and behavior that they can be overcome. The real enemy then is humanity itself. It really does look as though they, they are uh, inventing climate change that they just made it up out of thin air literally that that nobody really looks at that book and say well there you go it's not this has nothing to do with science whatsoever they just made it up interestingly in 1988 Maurice Strong had been instrumental in establishing the IPCC the mainly political entity which endorsed a thesis by a small group of scientists that industrial carbon dioxide was driving climate change and the IPCC has been locked into that theory ever since. 
Maurice Strong's masterstroke came in 1992, when as Secretary General of the UN's Earth Summit in Brazil, he saw 179 nations commit to a World Action Plan. Agenda 21. We have been the most successful species ever. We are now a species out of control. Nobody would question the need for a cleaner environment and the protection of nature. And Strong's legacy lives on through the Kyoto Protocol, the Paris Accord, the current Agenda 2030, and the worldwide push for carbon net zero. But there are questions on his motives and his connections. He was behind the first financial carbon market and a founding director of the World Economic Forum. Surely a conflict of interests with his involvement in the IPCC. A skeptic might ask why nearly all research grants in almost 40 years have gone on developing IPCC carbon dioxide theories, while anyone who raises questions is ridiculed, cancelled, or has their career stalled. Funding for someone who wants to determine the natural variability of the climate system as an explanation for what has happened is just not there. I mean, the government is very clear that they want a catastrophic story. There is no single science paper that proves conclusively that humans control all or most of the global climate. If there was, you wouldn't hear the last of it. Instead, we get this call to authority to the IPCC, the United Nations Panel on Climate Change. Many more scientists and academics are speaking out against the IPCC. Almost 2,000 have signed a declaration stating that there is no climate emergency, including Nobel Prize winner Professor John Clauser, who wrote, The popular narrative about climate change reflects a dangerous corruption of science that threatens the world's economy and the well-being of billions of people. We need to have a full and honest debate about the science. And it needs to be discussed in Parliament, it needs to be discussed in the media, it needs to be generally discussed. And we need to sort of dig the, bring the drains up, if you like, on all of the science to see what, 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 is there really a threat? That debate is highly unlikely because the juggernaut of net zero careers on with trillions at stake. What is certain is that the repercussions will affect the food we eat, ravage our countryside and have a disastrous impact on our energy supply.